Okay, today we're going to look at three examples of quotes or images from Pigeon English that you can make really good points about in the exam. Your quotes or examples don't need to be really long or complicated. What's more important is the points that you make about them. Okay, number one, the Dell Farm crew. A four-word quote, that's all you need in order to make a brilliant point. First of all, think about why it's called that. It's named after an estate. So for those who belong to the Dell Farm crew, it provides just that, belonging. It provides a sense of geographical identity, a sense of belonging rooted in a physical location. It's like being a, a fan of a, of a football team or wearing your national team's kit during the World Cup. It's a declaration that this is our land, this is our terrain, this is our turf, we belong here. This claiming of land seems to provide a sense of security to the gang's members in what would otherwise be a very hostile and brutal environment. Remember the word brutal itself is used 38 times in the novel to underline this idea. Then look at the word crew, as in the Del Farm crew. What does that make you think of? That make you think of a cabin crew or a crew on a ship. It's a, a team of people working together with a sense of purpose and unity. Can you see how belonging to a gang, gang called the, the Dell Farm Crew could make you feel that sense of togetherness and connection and purpose? And in a dysfunctional society where everyone feels isolated and is craving connection, you can see how young people could become susceptible to what a, a gang like the Dell Farm Crew has to offer. Okay, so our second example is a quote from page 23. And it says, paradiddle just means a drum roll. It's my favourite word of today. The novel is written from Harry's perspective as a first person narration. Make sure you mention that. Make sure you, make, you mention first person perspective in the exam. And as we listen to the voice of an 11 year old boy who's just arrived in, in England, we realise that he has incredible potential. He's the fastest runner in year seven, so he has athletic potential. He's intrigued by Mr. Tomlin's science lessons, so we he see that he has scientific and academic potential. He's amazing at cheering people up, singing, you are my sunshine, and coming up with little rhymes like rubber dub dub, no need to blub, when his sister Lydia is, is upset. So he has social and relational potential. In this quote, we can see that he has musical potential and maybe linguistic potential too, because he seems to love learning new words. Harry is all about potential, and his death is all about lost potential. Calman is exploring the impact of the knife crime epidemic on our society. He's saying, look at the doctors and athletes and scientists and musicians and fathers and writers that we're losing because of it. Every death on Britain's streets is the death of someone who could have played a role in transforming a dysfunctional society into a constructive and more harmonious one. So whenever we see Harry, Kelman reveals a new positive aspect of his personality. He spends the whole of the novel portraying Harry as bursting with potential so that his death at the end becomes so much more tragic and heartbreaking. Our final example is an image from page 105 at the beginning of the May section. It's of a CCTV camera. It's just the image of the CCTV camera. And you'll find images at the beginning of every section of the novel and you can often make useful points about them without actually needing to remember a quote. In this case, maybe it helps to raise the tension by implying a sense of danger and threat. After all, you only need CCTV if crime is likely in the area. It also emphasises the idea of being observed. There's a lot of observation going on in the novel. The pigeons watch everyone. CCTV records our movements and crimes. Harry and his friends peer at those be below with their binoculars, don't they? There's a constant sense of being observed, and maybe you could argue that this becomes quite oppressive and creates a mood where you feel that you're being watched every minute of the day. A kind of big brother is watching you idea. The term big brother doesn't come from the TV show, but from a novel by George Orwell called 1984. 
which represents a picture of a, a dystopian future society in which people's individual freedom has been eroded and a totalitarian government has a firm grip on everyone's lives by mean of, means of 24-hour surveillance. So maybe Kalman is exploring where the line should be drawn between a government taking steps to track people's movements by CCTV and other means and give people the liberty to lead their own lives in private. Where do you draw that line? Where do you draw the line between guaranteeing people's safety on the one hand and intruding on their privacy on the other? That's the question that maybe Stephen Kalman is trying to, to pose here. So there's three quotes or examples from the novel that I've given you today. Now have a go at writing about them in some paragraphs of your own, but don't shy away from using the kind of vocabulary that an examiner would like. Try to use the terms that I've used, like belonging, identity, brutality, connection, dysfunctional, potential, oppressive, dystopian. Weave those words into paragraphs and you'll impress an examiner.